Open Your Mind to Receive by Catherine Bonder. We do hope that you enjoy hearing this special audiobook presentation and that it will help to light your pathway in life. Please feel free to share this audiobook with friends and loved ones. Catherine Ponder is considered one of America's foremost inspirational authors. She has written more than a dozen books, which include such bestsellers as her Millionaires of the Bible series. She is a minister of the non-denominational Unity Faith, long known as the pioneer of positive thinking and has been described by some as the Norman Vincent Peale among lady ministers. She has given lectures on the universal principles of prosperity in most of the major cities of America and a lot of small ones, too, from Town Hall and the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York, to the Phoenix Country Club in Arizona, to the elegant Pioneer Theater Auditorium in Reno, Nevada, from Honolulu to New Orleans. She has given interviews on television and radio, as well as numerous interviews by the print media. Open your mind to receive. Why should you deliberately open your mind to receive? Because most of us have endured a pinched, narrow existence for no good reason. We have blocked our good from getting through to us in the process. There's nothing divine about a pinched existence. There's nothing divine about a narrow, limited way of life. It proves nothing but the foolishness and ignorance of man who actually lives in a universe of lavish abundance. Anyone who leads a pinched, narrow existence is not expressing his true nature. He is only cheating himself. If this has happened to you, there is something you can do about it. The word receive means to accept. Psychologists tell us that we can have anything we can mentally accept, but that we must mentally accept it first. A great part of the act of receiving is to accept the good you want mentally rather than fighting it mentally. A well-meaning young businessman said to me at a book autographing party, Are all of those success stories in your books factual? Aren't some of them fabricated? Why do you ask? Was my reply. Because they sound too good to be true. Just how long have you been reading about the power of prosperous thinking? I inquired. Oh, only about a month, he said. That explained his disbelief. He was still so conditioned to the limited beliefs of the world that he had not yet learned that nothing is too good to be true. I explained that for every success story that gets into my books, there are scores of others that do not. The results of prosperous thinking are so numerous I cannot possibly relate them all. And those reported to me are only a fraction of the happy experiences people have had who used the ideas suggested. This young man was still trying to open his mind to receive. He was trying to mentally accept the belief that unlimited good is his heritage. To help him do so, I suggested he speak forth this well-known statement for at least five minutes a day. Nothing is too good to be true. Nothing is too wonderful to happen. Nothing is too good to last. How a housewife prospered. A housewife said, Although I have studied the power of prosperous thinking for years and have had great improvement in my life from that philosophy, I recently discovered something I had been doing wrong. I had been saying that I was on a fixed income. I had been trying to bring more financial income to me in a certain way. I had not opened my mind to the possibility of unlimited supply coming to me in unlimited ways. When I realized my mistake, I spoke these words over and over aloud for a long time, I am receiving. I am receiving now. I am receiving all the wealth that the universe is for me now. Within a few hours, I received a telephone call from the new cable television company in town, inviting me to come in and discuss the possibility of doing a number of children's shows for them on material I had already developed for handicapped children and for slow learners. One went for the interview and this job is now assured. It is one that will bring a considerable income to me. As I continued speaking the word of receiving, my retired husband's business quickly picked up. A number of customers appeared with furniture for him to repair. These jobs will keep him busy and happy for some time. This woman continued to daily speak the word that she was receiving. Later she reported. 
money seems to be coming to me from all points of the universe. I have just sold a children's film which will be shown in schools as an entertainment feature for kindergarten and for underprivileged youngsters. Also, a film on games for children which I made months ago has now been marketed and orders are beginning to flow into the distributor. All this happened after I began daily to open my mind to receive. Many people fight the good rather than accepting it. They foolishly think they cannot have their good nor should they be asking for it. Such attitudes are no part of the child of a king. Do not burden yourself with such false ideas. Take just the opposite approach, as did this housewife, and see what happens as you open your mind to receive. How she made $30,000 her first year in business. Most of us have heard a great deal about giving but not nearly enough about receiving. At the Christmas season, the emphasis is usually on giving, giving, giving. The result is that many people have a hang-up about receiving. Giving is only one of the law of increase. Receiving is the other half. We can give and give, but we may unbalance the law unless we also expect to receive. Many people unbalance the law by not expecting to receive and so they do not. As related earlier in Open Your Mind to Prosperity, a very beautiful and fashionably dressed lady once said to me, when I first took up the study of prosperous thinking, I prospered so much so quickly that it startled me. I had just gotten a divorce and had only a few months living expenses on hand. I decided to take a chance and use that money to go into business on a shoestring. I expected to make between $4,000 and $6,000 the first year from my new business. Instead I made between $4,000 and $6,000 during the first few months. I made $30,000 that first year in business, and I will probably make at least $50,000 this year. My reason the repeating this lady's story here is because of her last statement. She said, my greatest problem has been in trying not to feel guilty about receiving so much. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, and it should be your good pleasure to receive it. Why a manufacturer failed? A recent newspaper story reported on a manufacturer of t-shirts who had gone bankrupt. The new story showed why, thinking it a joke, he had placed this slogan on the back of each t-shirt, money isn't everything. This man could not mentally accept the idea of prosperity in the form of money. He had not opened his mind to receive, so of course he did not. Conversely, perhaps you've heard the other quip, money isn't everything. There is also hunger, misery and poverty. You must be careful what you notice, talk about, or give your attention to, because that is what you are identifying with, and that is what you will bring into your life. Whatever you notice, you are inviting into your life. Whatever you talk about, you are inviting into your life. Whatever you identify within your thoughts, words and actions, you are inviting into your life. If you notice, talk about and identify with war, crime, disease, financial problems, and harmony, this is what you are inviting into your own life. Through the law of mind action it will come disease, financial problems, and harmony, this is what you are inviting into your own life. Through the law of mind action it will come. How a restaurateur identified with failure. There once was a man who thought he was about to go broke in the restaurant business. He invited me to eat in his restaurant. When I walked in, I could see one obvious reason why business was not good. His restaurant had such a dismal uninviting atmosphere. I suggested he brighten it up if he wanted people to come there to relax and to eat. On my way out, I discovered another reason why business was not good. Near the cash register was a joke sign which read, this is a non-profit business. We didn't plan for it to be. It just worked out that way. The joke was on that man. He had mentally identified with non-profit and that was what he had attracted. I suggested he throw away that sign and stop talking about lack if he wanted to prosper. 
identification with a certain state of mind will bring that state of mind and affairs to you, so be careful. What you notice, give your attention to, talk about, and get all worked up over emotionally is what you are inverting into your life whether you mean to or not. Open your mind to receive by noticing, giving attention to, and talking about what you want to bring into your life nothing else. How one man made a comeback from illness when he identified with good. I once dined with a famous metaphysician at his hill house overlooking Los Angeles. While on a lecture trip in that area, I was surprised to receive his invitation to dinner because I knew that he had undergone serious surgery just a few weeks previously. Many who knew him were predicting that he was through and that he would be forced to retire because of his health. Nevertheless, when I arrived at his beautiful home for dinner, he greeted me pleasantly. Other friends soon joined us and we had a happy evening together, as we chatted and reminisced about many things. His recent surgery was never mentioned. The state of his health was not discussed. In spite of all the dire predictions, this man made a tremendous comeback in his health and in his career. He was soon accepted by an even more prestigious church than he then served. Next, he wrote several books on which he lectured on around the world trip. I had the pleasure serving as one of the guest ministers in his thriving church while he was away. For a number of years thereafter he continued going strong. He spoke several times a week in his own church and elsewhere. He had a daily radio program, a dial a prayer ministry, and, on occasion, a television show. He still wrote a book a year. Only 15 years later, did he finally retire. When he passed on at the age of 86, he had outlived most of his relatives, friends and co-workers of long standing. More than two decades ago, when everyone said he was through, this man deliberately opened his mind to receive an inflow of health by identifying with the good. He made a comeback when they said it couldn't be done by concentrating on happy pleasant things rather than by dwelling on the dreary operations he had just experienced. How to identify with your source. Open your mind to receive by telling God what you want instead of constantly telling people. Telling people what you want can dissipate your good because God is the source of your supply not people. Although people, ideas, and opportunities are all channels of your supply, God is the source because he creates those ideas and opportunities. Through the law of mind action, he helps attract the appropriate people and circumstances to you to help expedite those ideas and opportunities through which your good can come to pass. A statement you will want to use often to help you identify with the source of your good is this, I do not depend on persons or conditions for my good. God is the source of my supply and God provides his own amazing channels of good to me now. The first kind of giving. Giving is the first step in receiving. When you want to receive, give. However, there are three kinds of giving. All three are equally necessary to your long-term growth and success. First, give to God, put him first financially. Why? As explained in Buddhism and elsewhere, this is the first quality to be developed in your character on the road to enlightenment. Many conscientious people study self-help methods galore, yet do not receive the benefits from them that they should because they ignore this first step. Various schemes have been suggested for getting rich quick. Most of them fail because they are based on getting not giving. They have no spiritual basis. The reason many people fail to receive their good in life is because they do not practice giving or returning impersonally to the universe on a systematic basis a portion of all that the universe shares with them. Two businessmen in Chicago once told me they had held the local franchise on one of the most famous success courses in America, one that cost thousands of dollars to take. Though they prospered for a time, they eventually went broke. They finally realized why, their course had only emphasized getting not giving. Their course had not taught the spiritual side of prosperity. It had not taught its students to tie their way to prosperity by returning to the universe a tenth of all they received. 
It was only after these two businessmen found their way into one of the local New Thought churches and began to put God first financially, that their financial affairs stabilized and they began permanently prosper. When any person withholds that which belongs to the universe, his life is thrown out of balance, and he experiences lack in some form. It may be lack of supply, lack of health, lack of love, lack of spiritual understanding, or lack of direct longing in his life. It is only as we let go of our littleness that we can expand into the larger life. So it is not enough to say that you believe God is the source of your supply as previously suggested. You must prove that you believe God is the source of your supply by first sharing with him. This keeps you in touch with the universal source of abundance. The billionaire Solomon pointed out what the wise use this ancient success method could mean to you when he advised, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy vats shall overflow with new wine. Proverbs 3 9 and 10. This success principle is more fully explained and documented in Chapter 7 as a method for helping you open your mind to receive. Bible passages quoted herein are from the American Standard Version or the King James Version of the Holy Bible. The second kind of giving. Second. Give to yourself. Yes, open your mind to receive by giving to yourself, because all progress begins with self-improvement. It is just as possible to overgive to others as it is to undergive to yourself. Overgiving to others and undergiving to yourself unbalances the law and keeps your good from coming through. You must first give your attention to the improvement and development of yourself before you can possibly help others. You cannot possibly give to others unless you first have something to give. You must first have strength wisdom and substance before you can share these qualities with others. There are those misguided people who think it is selfish to emphasize self-improvement first. But it is only after self-improvement that you are capable of helping others. When you do just the opposite, when you overgive to others and undergive to yourself, you feel depleted and you are. This causes within you a sense of lack which is degrading and limiting. Because of this, Overgiving to others is self-defeating. It accomplishes nothing constructive. Psychologists talk about the sin of parents who overgive to their children. This suppresses their children's talents and it overworks the parents. Such overgiving harms everyone concerned. In the recent age of permissiveness, we have witnessed the damaging results of overgiving parents in their confused, bewildered children. Conversely my own father reluctantly gave as little as possible to his children. The philosophy of undergiving had been a part of his upbringing. It caused us many hardships, and it took me years to overcome the poverty consciousness that resulted. So let us seek to strike a happy balance. The philosophers of old advised, to thine own self be true. Give something to yourself right away. It might be a new book you wish to read an item of clothing or jewelry, or something for your home or office. It might be the treat of going out to dinner, to the theater, to a party, or taking a vacation. It might be the deliberate setting aside of some daily time for prayer, meditation and inspirational study. It might be something, big or small, tangible or intangible. The third kind of giving. Third. After giving to God and to yourself, then give something to someone else. After you give something to someone else, bless whatever it is that you give. Bless the person or persons to whom you gave it. Then release both the gift and the recipient. Any man, woman, or child can transform his life by transforming what he gives out what he gives to God, what he gives to himself and what he gives out to others. When you are unsure what to give to others, that is the time to declare, I give under divine direction. Then watch the hunches and ideas that come. You'll be shown what to give, where, and to whom. Many of the blessings you want most are within your reach. By your acts of giving, you open the way to attract the blessings you desire. These blessings have probably been waiting to reach you, 
but they were blocked by your own lack of giving. There was no free channel through which they could pass. By giving under divine direction, you open a channel through which these blessings are freed to arrive. An early prosperity teacher of mine often said, first give to God. Then give to mankind as God directs. The one who did not prepare to receive suffered lack. After you give to God, your safe and others, then get read to receive. You can get ready to receive by preparing to receive. There are those who say, I give, but I do not expect to receive. And they do not. An unhappy lady explained, I teach a private prosperity class in my home, but I do not take an offering. I give, but I do not believe I should expect to receive. And she didn't, but she resented not receiving. She should have resented not receiving, because she was unbalancing the law of increase by giving, 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 and by not opening the way to receive. It was pointed out to this lady that it was fine to teach such a class, but that she was not only shortchanging herself, she was also shortchanging her students by giving them the impression they could get something for nothing. She should either have charged handsomely for her course or opened the way right there in class for her students to prove the law of increase by extending an invitation to them to give generous tithes and offerings in a precision for the priceless instruction they were receiving. She was cheating herself and she was cheating them by her fearful attitude. The one who prepared to receive prospered. It is reported that in the early days of the unity movement, a visiting metaphysician spoke to the workers employed by the Unity School of Christianity at their headquarters then located in Kansas City, Missouri. The guest speaker was introduced by Unity's co-founder, Charles Fillmore. Early in his talk, this well-meaning but somewhat self-righteous speaker said, In my ministry, we do not pass the offering plate. We leave one at the back of the room and if anyone wishes to give something, the plate is available. But I do not stress giving. According to the oft-repeated report, that's as far as he got. Charles Fillmore walked up to the lectern and said you may think and teach what you wish in your organization, but in this one. We believe in passing the plate because we know the law of giving and receiving. Not only do pass the plate in our meetings, but each plate is always filled to overflowing. Students of practical Christianity want to give so they can prosper, and so they can help this movement to prosper. It is little wonder that Mr. Fillmore later became known as one of the pioneers of positive thinking or that the unity movement, which he co-founded, became a successful organization which has inspired millions over the years. You can see how a contrast in attitudes brought a contrast in results. One teacher did not believe in teaching the universal law of giving and receiving and did not. Her students were few. The other teacher did believe in teaching the universal law of giving and receiving, and he became head of a prosperous organization that has helped countless people around the world. You can give up any false ideas you may have heard about receiving. Your receiving doesn't stop anyone else's receiving. We live in a lavish universe, and there's plenty for all. How preparing for wealth attracted it. The owner of a charm school was widowed with small children to support. People kept saying, she is a lovely girl one, but nobody wants to marry someone with all those children. That's too much financial responsibility to assume. This attractive widow paid no attention to that kind of talk. She taught prosperity principles in her charm course. She told her students they must develop a prosperous consciousness in order to be charming and successful in every phase of their lives. She did everything that occurred to her personally to prepare to receive a better way of life. She bought a striking gold designer's suit which she constantly wore. It cost $200, which was a huge sum for such an item 23 years ago. Once a week she invited me to dine with her, always in the best restaurants, though sometimes she barely had the price of our lunch. Did the act of preparing for greater good attract it to her? She married a widower of third generation wealth. He had four children. He helped raise her three, and later they had one of their own, a total of eight children. 
while everyone around her was talking lack and limitation, she was quietly preparing for just the opposite, and what she prepared for, she got. I find it interesting that none of the people who tried to mentally limit her future ever attracted wealth to themselves not through hard work, marriage, or a windfall. The limited thoughts they meant for her they unwittingly attached to themselves. Prepare, by speaking the word of receiving. Many people's prayers are not answered because they keep asking in prayer, but they do not follow through by getting ready to receive. After you prepare to receive, you are then ready for the next step. Speak the word of receiving as did the housewife early in this chapter. When you daily declare that you are receiving, your words make a believer out of your subconscious mind which then starts working with you to help make it so. The way to avoid a pinched, narrow way of life is to deliberately speak the word of receiving. Declare daily, I am receiving. I am receiving now. I am receiving all the wealth that the universe is for me now. A businessman started doing this, and within one year his income became eight times what it had been. Another businessman says he has received unexpected checks of $1,000 or more every time he has consistently declared, all that is mine by divine right now comes to me speedily, richly, freely. I am receiving now. Release is the final step. As a teacher of practical mysticism recently said, students of prosperity need to know when to release the inner work they have done, then relax so that outer results can come. There are resting places in mental action. There is a time to fish and a time to dry your nets. On various occasions in my life, greater good has come to me after long periods of inner work when I felt guided to release it all to its perfect results. Several books have gotten finished after I did this. Happy changes in location and work, a better income, larger homes, have all appeared after I worked inwardly, then turned loose, relaxed and let go. So, after speaking the word of receiving for a period, then declare that you have received and release it. Assume that greater good is already yours, since you have claimed it on the inner plane. This helps that good to appear on the outer plane as visible results in rich appropriate form under divine timing. When you have reached this point of release, declare it is finished. It is done. I give thanks that I have received, and that my good appears in rich appropriate form under divine timing. As you then relax and let go, this process can open the way for unlimited results. Summary. 1. The word receive means to exop. Psychologists tell us we can have anything we can mentally accept, but we must be able to mentally accept it first. 2. Most of us have heard a lot about giving but not enough about receiving. Many people have a hang-up about receiving. 3. Giving is only one half of the law. Receiving is the other half. Many people unbalance the law by overgiving. Many people unbalance the law by not expecting to receive. 4. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom and it should be your good pleasure to receive it. 5. What you notice and talk about, you are inviting into your life. What you identify within your thoughts, words and actions, you are inviting into your life. 6. Open your mind to receive by identifying with the good. 7. Open your mind to receive by telling God what you want, instead of telling people. Telling people what you want can dissipate your good. People are channels, but God is the source. 8. When you want to receive, give. There are three kinds of giving. All are necessary. A. Give to God. Put Him first financially. This is the first quality to be developed on the road to enlightenment. B. Give to yourself. Self-improvement is necessary before you can help others improve. C. Give something to someone else. 9. Get ready to receive. Prepare to receive. 10. Next, daily speak the word of receiving. This gains the cooperation of your thought and feeling nature which then begins to work for you. Finally, declare that you have received, 
and then release it. This causes your accumulated good to move from the invisible plane and to become visible results.